Welcome everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today is Tuesday watercolor painting, and we're going to be doing some fall leaves today. It's almost the end of uh, the leaves for around here in Ontario, Canada. Uh, they went down quite fast this year. We didn't really get a whole lot of color either. Um, not as colorful as we typically get. And I think that has to do with the uh, dry summer we had. Um, but I did find a few with a little bit of color in them. Um, so last week we did fairies, or last month. And this was the fairy we did last Tuesday. And there was a printable for this if you wanted to um, paint this yourself. Uh, this was really fun to do. I really enjoyed doing the fairies and if you're um, into fairies or you want to see more of this type of art just leave a comment down below so I'll know uh, to maybe doing elf on the shelf. <laughs> Who knows? Um, and we, I could always do a bunch of traceables for those too. Uh, on the weekend, it was also uh, membership streams and videos. And we did, for the third tier, which is Blooming Artists, we actually did uh, positive, negative, now what was it called? No tan, it's called. It's, it's actually a uh, Japanese um, design type. Hi Michelle, good to see you. So what we did were, I just stuck to black and white. So this is a uh, type of no tan. So you have your um, negative and positive. And um, on the, uh, this one here, I actually drew in the veining of the leaves and the stems. Now this isn't true no, uh, no tan because uh, no tan is mirror image. So this one isn't a mirrored image, but it's part of the no tan design system. Now this one is, and it's done with the, I think it was a five inch square we have here, and you draw on your black. You can do it either black or white. You're just, the background has to be a different color. And then you mirror image all of your pieces that you cut out and I used an exacto knife. This is really fun. If you look up no tan, it's N O T A N on the internet, you'll see all kinds of different styles of art um, that's that they use this. You could do it with uh, reversible paper like um, <laughs> we actually tried one but realized it wasn't a no it wasn't reversible. So you got to have to watch this. So this is two-sided paper. So we ended up, well, since it's not working, how can we use it still? So what we did is we took the piece that we cut out and actually made it into an overlap. So this is a page um, instead. So you still have your see-through, but I just... Uh, weaved it through it and then added a little bit of pen work to um, both sides and this could be added to a book page or whatever and these are really fun to do and that uh, was in the third blooming artist um, level now on this actually <laughs> silly me I didn't do the tabs on the video properly and it ended up going public. So you guys got a freebie. <laughs> and it was these. These are the um, silhouettes. So that's what we did uh, for the second level which you can go and um, view because it's in the public. <laughs> and I thought well I'm not going to take it down. So I'll just leave it up for a te teaser of what you can see in the um, membership streams. Hi, 
Fran, good to see you. So these were done with uh, backgrounds from calendars. So you can use calendars and then it's just black paint and you can find silhouettes on the internet. Um, I explain everything in the video if you want to go watch that. So I put that one in my September folder. I still have to glue some stuff on that side. That was the back. And this was my October folder. So that was the first one we did. And I still have papers to glue on there. And then that was what we did last week on Thursday. What level are the fairies? Um, if you just want, it was just, the fairies is a level one. All the, um, which is the artistic seedlings, and you get all of the downloadables. Um, if you want any of the um, videos, then it's the, two levels up from that but if you just want the all the downloadables it's the first level which is uh, artistic seedlings and uh, all you have to do is um, go into your community my community page on the memberships and you'll it'll show you all of the um, postings that I've done and you can click on all those um, links and it'll send you to Google Drive and you can download them all down there many times as you want. You're welcome. So I thought today, because it's the last bit of beautiful leaves that are coming down, and we're supposed to get a real snowmageddon thing going this month, so probably won't be able to get leaves anymore after this week because we're supposed to get a pile of snow. So it's going to start early this week. Um, or this month. Usually we, well, usually it's the end of December we get snow, snow typically. But not this year. Everything's screwed up. <laughs> Nothing's normal anymore. Um, so I picked some leaves. This is from my, it's called a Stewardia tree. And it gets beautiful, beautiful flowers on in July. White flowers, huge, huge fl white flowers are gorgeous. And um, typically these really do color up nice, but this year it didn't get a whole lot of color. Um, usually it's a scarlet red, like burning red. But there's not much color, but there's a bit of color. So I, I got these. Oh yeah. I flattening these and these are from the um, maple tree that is in the back and they're not the best colored leaves but they'll do usually they're a lot lot uh, prettier so we're going to be drawing out these and uh, painting them in a wet in wet technique hey Lisa Darlene Good to see you guys. So I have a mechanical pencil here and for those who don't like to draw or aren't um, confident enough to draw and like it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these leaves and I'm going to place them on my paper and draw around them. So this way you'll get the shape. Now these leaves are, um, I think it's from a king maple, um, red king I think it's called. So they're, a, they come out really dark burgundy in the spring, the leaf, and then they kind of go to a, uh, gr a dark green burgundy shade in the summer. But they usually get a really pretty color in the fall. But not a whole lot this year. We've got quite a few different um, maple trees around here. But we'll just use what we found. So you can place them wherever you want. You can overlap if you want. 
like we could do this here. And this way you're you're getting the the form of the leaf. And as you can see, they're all different. They don't have to be uh, the same because they're not. I remember in um, brownies, we had to learn how to draw the maple leaf for the Canadian flag. <laughs> had to be so many points on the, you know, they don't. They all have different points, different um, shapes to them. Look at this one. It's missing part of the, you know, it's all different. Let's see, we'll do this one up here, I guess. Um, you could draw beech, birch, um, oak if you have it, walnut. We have some walnut trees around here. There's quite a few actually. Um, or if you have a sumac, those are gorgeous in the in the uh, fall. They're usually always colorful. I don't have any sumac around here though. But it's nice just to draw them up to the how you want. And maybe this one. We'll do maybe a, just a few on this one. I'm just going to take this branch off and let's see. I might just, well, we'll do this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just something to give you a reference of how it's looking. And then we'll just paint it up. We'll just lay it out. There. So that one we'll have. This one? Yeah. Mine. Oh, I just lost a leaf. There it is. It was like that and then like that. So I'll just put it out like this. There. We'll keep these so we know which ones we're painting. Oh, actually, I didn't paint that one. It's this one. Okay. So. And then I, we can do some writing in here. Ah, uh, thank you. Just learning to paint in my 60s. Such a great hobby. Um, I'm a cake decorator, so wanted to learn to get right before I paint on cakes. Oh, awesome! That's cool, Fran. Awesome. Wow. You go on Instagram or anything, I'd love to see those cakes that you do. I think it's amazing cake decorating. You're never too old to learn something new. That's what I always say. All right, so we're going to do wet into wet. And this is just sketchbook paper, so it's not watercolor paper. So it's going to be a little different than what you would get in... Um, watercolor paper but we're going to give it a try anyways because not everybody has watercolor paper but I don't want that to stop anyone from using watercolors because I know watercolor uh, paper can get fairly expensive uh, myself I don't buy the real expensive stuff especially if I'm just um, 
using it for my journal or, you know, practicing or whatever. Because um, it's, it's, I'm frugal, let's face it. <laughs> frugal. <laughs> I just can't get myself to spend that kind of money for um, painting something like a practice sheet. Okay, so we got a nice, nice dark, dark, dark. So what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to, let's see, I have my, this is uh, Cad Red here by Core. I'm going to put it over here, add some water to it. I did spray my palette before I went on, just to get it going. And most of it's, well, it's not bad. I just tap. I don't care if it, uh, goes all over the place, as long as it's not going into the dry areas. And usually it won't. It might bleed a little bit, but typically, uh, it'll stay in the wet areas. This is the easiest way of doing these leaves, I, I find anyways. Okay, so now what I want to do, any real sopped up soppy areas like it's really pooling. I'm going to just take my damp brush and sop that up. Because that'll take a long time to dry. And you can uh, spread it out a little bit. Make it a little more smoother. And we can always go back and add more. But I want a concentrated um, dark color up there. So now I'm going to add there's some really nice gold in, in the middle here. So I'm going to take some of this, I think Indian yellow. Uh, this is by Core. They have a really nice pigment. So just in the center here, again, I'm just going to and I'm going to let it mix. If it wants to mix around, let it. Okay. So that's just the base. Hi, Dot. Good to see you. Okay, so I don't want to go in the wet areas because then it'll mix with the both of these. So I'm going to go into this one up here, which was that fun. All right, am I back? I got disconnected, our internet went down. Hey Dot of my back. <laughs> that was weird. No, our, uh, my internet went right down. And then I just uh, came back on the same stream. Hopefully I, it doesn't stream the loop. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, that was very strange. I don't know what happened there hope everyone comes back but oh well <laughs> so how are you doing dot it 
it's really cold. We're going to get snow here. Yuck. But it is what it is. Not much we can do about it. Okay, I'm just going to wash in. This is very, very light um, pigment load of color here. And along the sides of the leaf, it's a little bit more stronger. So I'm just going to put those in. The tip is a little stronger. Hey Brenda! Yeah, we had a little blip on the internet here. I'm thinking it might be the storm that's coming in. We're supposed to get snow squalls. Lake effect snow. It's starting early. So I'm just putting in, not in all of the areas, but just kind of a light marbled look of color. Hey Kathleen, yeah, we're going to get um, bad snow here, so it's misbehaving. This one has a little bit of the edges that are a little darker, but you can just blotch it in. And this one is cool. So we'll go with the lighter color, which will be the yellow. And this one, I think I'm going to stick with the same yellows. Maybe a little bit on the green side, though, this one. Just put a little green in there, but I want it fairly watery. So I'm just going to do the whole thing again in a wet into dry. the stems in a I'll just put them in with this yellow too some of them are red though so I'll repaint it the red all right so this one has the green on top so we can do the same thing this time I'm going to take that leaf green and I'm just gonna it's more or less in the center area so just dab. You want it mottled looking. Doesn't have to be even. Now if you wanted to keep the um, stem or the veining area to be a little more on the yellow, then you could take a masking fluid after it dried, mask the vein area, let it dry completely without a uh, a uh, heat gun or hair dryer and then um, paint right over the masking fluid and then take the masking fluid off but I can't do that during a stream because it takes too long to dry all right so we got this one here and again that's that Indian yellow shade and we're just gonna do the whole thing Indian yellow. 
And this is just the first coat. So that, like that. And then there's yellow on these too. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint all of these leaves in the same yellow. Lots of water in the paint. All right. Okay. So that one was that. So this one has a little bit of, it's almost a rust color. So I think I'll take some of this. Um, raw sienna, a little bit of red with it, and I'm just going to dab here and there. Doesn't have to be totally that color. And the same with this one; it can have a little bit of that. And then you just kind of dab. And this one has a lot, quite a bit actually. And you can take salt and make it bloom by letting it dry. So I wonder if I have any salt. Here I did, but where would I put it? It's a question. <laughs> oh, there it is. So if I take some salt, this is coarse table salt, and I'm just gonna put some on the leaf here and let it dry, and it'll give little a bit of color difference. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry and we'll work on these. Okay, so as you can see, there's some little specks, marks, that type of thing. Now, you could either take a uh, watercolor pencil, or if you don't want to use watercolor, you could actually just use a pencil, too, and draw in the veinings. But they also have these little blemishes in parts of it. So we could put that in, too. Um, so let's put, it's kind of a raw umber, maybe a little bit of blue with it, make it a little bit on the gray side. More umber, there, kind of a dirty, so there's some. areas here and there. This isn't completely dry yet, but that's fine. If it bleeds, then that's fine too. I'm just going to pop them in here and there. You could actually, uh, let's just take some water on this. And just tap some speckles. See, these guys have it too. So just tap, make some marks. There's a little bit more pigment in 
down here along the edges. Am I still on? Yep. Never know. And I'm going to do the same here. Add some more. YouTube is not receiving enough video. That's weird. Weird, weird internet today. Sorry guys if this is a real bad connection. I'm just going to chop that up a little bit. It's kind of cooling. Okay, so I'm going to take the hair dryer, or not hair dryer, heat gun and blow dry this. So we want it good and dry before we do anything else to it. Okay, so this side's good and dry. I didn't dry this side, so we're going to play with this while that hopefully does something with the salt. <laughs> Might not because it's not watercolor paper. Who knows? Hi, Ray! So you can use... I don't have watercolor pencils. Yes, believe it or not, I don't. <laughs> Um, I do have these though, the clean brush watercolor markers, and I thought I'd use those today. So you kind of have a nice orange veining on this one here. So let's play with that. And this gives you a really fine point. These are really nice. So we have three main stems. So I'm 
and it comes from the very base of the leaf where the stem is. And then there's one here, and then there's one there. And then they're, they're not um, across from each other. The other veins are a little bit um, Just take your time. Do it the way you want. There's okay, there's that one. This one is this one here. And the veining is more on the burgundy side. So let's see. Use this one here. Same thing, base. So it's fairly pronounced on the base here. And this one only has three because it was a deformed leaf. That looks about right. And then the, around here, see it. The see how the uh, stem is very dark, dark. So we'll just do some. And it's kind of dark in the center here. along the very edge of the leaf. There's some darker areas. Maybe on the tips. A little darker. Now if you had watercolor paper you could probably move this. Um, right in here. Kind of dark. And this is dark. This is kind of more orangey. Alright. This one, it's very dark, so we'll use the same one on here. And it also has a dark stem. Very dark. Uh,
there. Okay. And actually, this one has some orange stem. It's kind of a mix. So we'll just add a little bit of orange on it. And then I'm going to put a little orange on the bottom part of this. Just seems to be a little bit more orangey. Let's see if we can move this a little bit. Mm, not the greatest. Let's get some of that Indian yellow again. A little bit of red. Brighten that center part up there a little bit. So a little bit of this bright color. And guys, there's no way you can go wrong with these. It's every leaf's different. So just play with it. Have fun with it. See what you can do. This is a great way of learning how to um, mix your colors. Okay, this one I'm going to put a little bit of green in there. I think there's just the faintest bit of green in here, just a smidge. And then a little bit of that. I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there. And I'm going to brighten that up. Mainly along the edges of this. It seems a little bit brighter. I'm just taking some water and letting it combine. Red right there. Take the hard edge off. And then some nice bright yellow. There's just a few areas over the uh, veins that you see a little bit of a bright yellow. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little bit here and there. Like I said. Thanks, Darlene. Just play with it. Have some fun with it. Okay, this one. Let's see if we can soften that a little bit to bleed into the A little. And then a little bit of green at the bottom here. And a little bit more green. See how there's it's more green in here? 
So now we can take that green and leave a little bit of the yellow along the vein. you can still see the yellow through it. But I'm just leaving a little bit of that yellow along the edge of the vein. Okay. Hey Janet, good to see you. Okay, we'll let those dry and let's see. How are these coming along? They're not quite dry. I don't think I'm going to get a whole lot of um, texture from that salt, so I'm just going to dry it. Okay, it gave us some, but not a lot. It's good. A little bit of texture never help. Always helps in uh, decaying leaves. <laughs> so now we can go in and make up a little bit of that. Let's see, it was Indian yellow and. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to clean an area here. Indian yellow with a little bit of red in it. It's a smidge. Maybe a little bit of umber. And we can still do some dots. Mm, I think I'm going to add that and do this. I added that to this um, mix I had over here. It kind of looks um, like a muddy grayish green color. We'll just use that on the branch part. I'm just using the tip, very tip of my brush. All right. Hi, that painter. Welcome to the channel. Okay, let's see. Let's get out some fine brushes here. Let's see. This 
is a zero. And Okay, this one I'm noticing that the veining on that comes from the center vein, they're all parallel with each other it, for the most part. Mm, they're not exactly though. I guess it wouldn't matter. Some of them are, some of them aren't. But again, just light, light. There's more of them closer together though. I, so you gotta take a look at that. They're not all the like identical. Some of them branch off near the end. It's not that noticeable, but there are some. Depends how detailed you want to get. They do kind of, there's quite a few um, sections though on them. More on the, uh, as it goes up the leaf to the edge. You'll see more of a sectioning. These are nice brushes for this. It doesn't let out too much paint all at once, so I like that. This is a Rosemary and Company spotter, red dot spotter. And it's a zero. I'll show you in a minute what it does. It's very nice. It's easy to control. And it doesn't let out a lot of um, paint. So you're able to do a fairly um, a thin line. And you can get smaller than this too. Let's do this one here. And it, it holds a lot. these usually because they're short they're, they're very short bristle they're easier to uh, control just saying Janet <laughs> you might like them Especially if you're one that um, tends to work small, these would be good. Was still a lot of um, the edges. It's more of a little bit of a serrated edge to these. So I'm going to put 
just a little bit. I might have to go in and um, do that with the pen. It's not going to show. So let's do this guy. This guy's the nice, colorful part of the leaf. So we'll take the bigger one. And this has kind of got um, more of a um, orangey, bright orange. This is a coral color. I think it's the Daniel Smith. Which one was it? This one? Oh, it's Pyro Red by Daniel Smith. It's very pretty. So there's quite a bit of coral color in the uh, one side of this leaf. We're more concentrated on the edges. bright green, leaf green. There's some of that in there. Just on the, uh, oh, I put it on the wrong one. Oh well. See? Doesn't matter. Make this colorful anyways. You can do both of them. I'm going to put a little bit of green in this one, too. Why not? <laughs> so let's do some more of this coral color. Um, we'll just add it to this here. These leaves are really this color. It's amazing how bright they are. the soft edge. Just add a little bit of water. Soften the edge. A little green right in here. Okay, we'll let that dry. And we'll add a little bit of a gray tone to that um, stem. And that's just with a little bit of blue, Payne's gray, or whatever you got with ultramarine, or and then you just add a little umber to it, and it'll give you this green, kind of a bluey gray, depending on how much um, you put of each color. So we'll just darken some of these. And let's see. Maybe put a little bit of still got lots of spots on these guys. Put a little more in. Where they're starting to decay. Now I'm just making it up.
You could do this with your pen too if you wanted to or a colored pencil. Alright Darlene, have a good day. Thanks for coming. And these guys, I think I need more of that too. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more. Do some more splotches. Perfect. They're fun to do. And you get to learn how to make different colors. All right, let's dry these. Thanks, Scott. Now, I found one of my pens, finally. This is a sepia color, and this is a Una, Una pen, fine line, water and fade proof. This is a um, 05. So now we can emphasize certain areas.
where the veining starts. Sometimes it's a little thicker there. Just if you emphasize one side a little more than the other, it'll give a little more depth. You can add a little more points to it if you want. Just because it's um, a fall leaf, it's not going to be nice and crisp looking. So you could add more um, holes or whatever you want. Especially the darker ones. They look nice if they're added to with a pen, I find. Just grunges them up a little bit. Sometimes they need it. Oh, you haven't got your laptop dot? Ooh. Yeah, I can see how you could be struggling. <laughs> Was it in repair? Yes. It's always nice to get it updated. Surprising when you don't have it, how much you miss it, and you realize how much your life rotates around your darn computer. Sad, but true. And I'm gonna let's see what can we do with this. These are more jagged, serrated, so I'm gonna put serrated edge on these. If I can. I 
actually. This could be darker. Right in here. Let's go with this one. That's where you made it. Soften it a little. Not bad. Okay. Make an edge on this one. Here. Finishing up the stem here. I'm not going to have a lot of detail on it, but a little bit. Little streaks. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of Just to give it a little bit more. Well, these leaves almost look like um, a, a beech or a birch, too. I got a lot of, of side um, veins.
Oh, awesome. Yeah, no, more RAM and more hard drive is a terabyte. Now I got a terabyte on mine too. When you're doing a lot of videos, you need that. All right, so now I think I want to do a bit of splatter of the different colors. So we're just going to get some more of that reddish color. Let's see. I think it was this one. And maybe some yellow or green. I like splats. And some yellow, Indian yellow. Mm, run out of space here. You can wipe up some if you don't want all of them, like dull some of them down. There. There's the leaves. So just go out, find some leaves on the ground, and see if you could draw them up. Doesn't take much. So I'm going to give this a dry and see if I can erase some of the lines of the pencil. No, I don't think I've seen that, Dot. You should put it on um, Twitter or Instagram. Just tag me. I'd love to see it. some of these. You never know. Sometimes you can. If you don't have too much. Uh... Paint on over top of it. Sometimes you can. A little bit. Now I can make a shadow on this too. So, if I was going to make a shadow, you want to keep it all in the same direction. And we'll just use this grayish, bluey color, but really watered down. And you just kind of take the shape of your um, stem. So let's say it's coming this way, so you're only going to you're going to see um, shade in the underneath here. The points. It doesn't have to be like really, really accurate. Cool, Dot. Awesome. That's neat. I love the color.
you, know, you have it hanging in your wall or is that for was it on somebody else's wall So then the coming down here, we'll see. A little bit more here. Here. So if it's coming like this, we'll see it on this side. And this is overlapped, so it'll be darker in there. And then there will be a little bit of a shadow here. And this one, it's coming this way, so we'll see bits of this one, depending on how, if it's right on the table or if it's sitting up a little bit off of the table because of the stem, you might see... Um, A little bit of a different shadow. So that would be like that. This would be That's cool. Yeah, I liked it, Dot. It was awesome. Love the colors. So that the the two-tone stripey type of thing was the back of it. That's awesome. It's on your wall. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of, just a smidge of shadowing just right there, a little bit, not much. I'm going to have this curled up a little bit, shadow, and this in here, just to show that it's a little bit curled. Right, and maybe 
maybe that could be a little curled. So a nice soft gray can um, really help if you want to show that there's curling in the leaf, that type of thing. That's it. So there's the shadows. And I'm just going to probably write in that these are from my yard and that it was an early fall. Give the date, that type of thing. And then um, what do you guys want to do for November? Uh, it's on my Instagram now also. Give 79. Okay, I'll look that up. Thanks, Dot. Not sure if I... I think I follow you, but I'm not sure. So, I did have a few people that wanted to... Where was that list? I have a list. Um, where, did it, where did they put it? One was trees. They wanted to know how to do. And what was the other one? Where did I put that? I have notes all over the place. I'll find it eventually somewhere around here. But um, no, that's awesome, Dot. I love your work. I love your um, needlework. You do you do fantastic work. I don't think I have the patience for that. Well, in the eyesight, you need good eyesight. <laughs> All right, so I'll just bring you down a little bit so you can see it. So get out there and this is just sketchbook. If you want to use colored pencils, you can do that too. And then uh, just have some fun. Play with your paint. See what colors you can make up. Have some fun with it. You love hand stitching. Oh, that's cool. I've got all kinds of stuff to do hand stitching. <laughs> I just gotta get to it, I guess. I gotta reorganize stuff here too. Because you know, you put away stuff and then you forget about it. But I know I got all kinds of stuff that I wanted to do a combination of hand stitching and painting. Because I love textile art. So I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic day and get out and take a look at all the beautiful leaves and colors. Fall is a beautiful time of the year but before you know it that white stuff's going to be flying. <laughs> so enjoy the time you're able to get out. Alright, so I'll see you all on Thursday. We'll be doing another um, maybe mixed media or just acrylic painting again and I'll have a uh, printable ready for you for that one too. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing but if you got some suggestions just leave them down below in the description and um, comments. Yes, it takes practice. I agree. Alright, have a good one everyone. Bye for now.